So, we've reached the second half of the MLB season. The teams have played long enough so we can understand everyone's place in this current MLB season. Just looking at the standings, we understand that the Yankees, Twins, and Angels have been disappointing, the NL East is the mess we all thought it was going to be, and the NL West is absolutely loaded. As a Padres fan, there hasn't been too much to complain about. From Joe Musgrove's no-hitter to Daniel Camarena's grand and slam, this season has been amazing. However, I would be lying if I didn't say the most disappointing aspect of the season has been Blake Snell's first impression as a Padre. Today, we're going to look at what has happened to Blake Snell this season and hopefully find a solution to his struggles. Prior to joining the Padres, Snell had an overall positive tenure with the Tampa Bay Rays. Entering the league as a top 15 prospect in 2016, it didn't take long to have a breakout season, which resulted in a Cy Young award in 2018. Unfortunately, multiple trips to the IL in 2019, ranging from loose bodies in his throwing elbow to a broken toe as the result of moving furniture in his home bathroom, hindered his overall season performance. But in the shortened 2020 season, it seemed that Snell was trending back to his Cy Young form. He never quite reached the highs of 2018, but his performances in both the regular season and particularly the World Series caught the eyes of the baseball world. And just before the start of 2021, Snell was traded to the Padres in exchange for a trade package that included top 25 pitching prospect Luis Patino and former top prospect Francisco Mejia. This leads us to the 2021 season. Unfortunately, Snell's first half stats in 2021 are the worst of his career, even worse than 2017. At one point, his ERA was 5.72 after allowing 7 runs against the Rockies. The Rockies. To be fair, the Rockies are much better at home this season, and Snell seems to have a fear of pitching on the road in 2021. Okay, so we see the standard stats. What does StatCast say? Well, his barrel, hard hit, and sweet spot percentages are at career highs, as well as pretty much every stat that begins with the letter X. And really, if we just look at the percentile rankings, the issues are quite clear. As someone who's watched every single Blake Snell start this season, it seems to be an issue with his command. Notice that while his chase rate is in the 30th percentile, his whiff rate is in the 81st percentile. This tells me that Snell's stuff is fine. However, the problem is the location is just not there. The biggest culprit? his changeup. Of the four pitches in his arsenal, the changeup is clearly the pitch that hitters have been able to figure out. Looking at heat maps of the changeup between 2018 and 2021, there is a distinct difference. In 2018, Snell was very consistent with his changeup location. However, over the years, the location became a bit more erratic. 2020 was a slight step up from 2019, but 2021 has gone downhill. Literally. It's not completely red, but there's a clear issue with changeups at the bottom of the zone. Interestingly, in 2019, Snell threw low changeups nearly as much as he's doing in 2021. However, the whiff percentage was nearly 47% almost double the whiff percentage on changeups in 2021. Pretty impressive for his third most used pitch in 2019. Speaking of pitch frequency, that has also drastically changed within the past two seasons. In 2019, Snell's slider was his least used pitch, being thrown less than 7% of the time. Two years later, it's his second most used pitch at over 20%. The question is whether this change in philosophy is because of poor results, or has it always been the plan? Well, his curveball has been getting hit more than usual. In fact, not only is the expected slugging percentage against the curveball at a career high, the whiff and putaway percentages are at drastic career lows. Over the years, Snell's curveball placements have gotten lower and lower. His curveball placement in 2021 isn't much lower than in 2020, but it has gotten much more erratic. Something interesting is the drop of spin rate. Now, before we jump to conclusions, 
engines, it's worth noting that the average spin rates of Snell's fastball, changeup, and slider are not much different from previous seasons, but the curveball is an outlier. A near 150 RPM drop in a singular pitch? To further illustrate this, let's look at Snell's spin rate ranges between his first start of 2021 and his last start before the All-Star break. Between his fastball, slider, and changeup, the ranges have decreased slightly but nothing drastic. However, the curveball is a different story. At first, it doesn't seem too bad, but this is a bit misleading. On July 4th, Snell threw only one curveball over 2400 RPM. So let's remove that pitch and see a more accurate range. Yeah, that's a huge drop off. Interestingly, the drop-off started not in the middle of the season, but right after his first start. In fact, his curveball spin rate has been spotty for pretty much the whole season. So, to counteract these struggles, how has Snell decided to use his pitches this season? Well, he's tried many different combinations of pitch distribution. The increased usage of the fastball is likely tied to the decreased spin rate of his curveball. Also, if we add in the monthly batting averages against the specific pitches, we see that May was his worst month. If we look even deeper and look game by game, I'd say that for the most part, there's a pattern. In three of the four worst starts of the season for Snell, he threw the fastball at a below average rate. The anomaly of this group is his start on June 16th where he threw his second highest fastball rate of the year but allowed seven runs. If we look at Snell's best starts of 2021, three of the four feature above average fastball use. Snell's best start of the year on June 4th featured his highest fastball rate of the season. However, he also decreased his changeup usage to only 3%, much less than his season average. What this signals to me is when Snell is commanding his fastball well, the game completely opens up for him. Interestingly, if we look back at his 2018 season, his best months were August and September. The fastball percentage in August was the second highest of the season, while it was at a season low in September. Instead, he threw more curveballs and sliders. Also, these were the lowest slider usage months of the year. Fast forward to 2021, the slider is his second most used pitch. It's worth noting that Padres pitching coach Larry Rothschild was the pitching coach during Sonny Gray's time with the Yankees, where Sonny Gray said the team emphasized slider usage, which Gray believes ruined his productivity in New York. Once he was traded from the Yankees, he became a good pitcher again. Is this a coincidence? Maybe. It's worth noting that Snell's changeup has been subpar and his curveball has been erratic, so the slider is the only breaking pitch he has. Okay, we've looked at a bunch of numbers, but I want to know what Snell himself thinks is the problem. In a few press conferences, he mentions the little things that you can't really see in stats. I like how the ball's coming out of my hands. I like how I feel. I'm healthy. I feel strong. I mean, now it's little things, better sequencing knowing the hitters, knowing why I'm throwing pitches in certain situations, knowing that the hitters are cheating the fastballs up, knowing that if you throw off speed to a guy and just strike it, he ain't gonna do nothing with it because he's cheating fastball, like common sense stuff. He also talks about the amount of walks he's giving up and his command in general. Three change-ups, they had a 3-1 fastball, so those are all their hits. Um, it's more the walking. If I can limit the walking, make them put it in play, uh, I have a better chance, you know, get quicker outs. Stuff like that. I mean, it's stuff that, you know, I've been focusing on, working on, but this has been one of the you know, biggest rough patches of my career. Um, and I'm okay with that because I got to find a way to fight and it's going to make me so much better in the long run. So um, because I threw one down the middle to McCormick and he went like this and just took it right down the middle. So obviously the life on it is really good. So it's more um, how I set that pitch up and how I get it uh, to where I want it but also, you know, commanding it a little bit better. In his following start, he pitched his best game of the season, which was the game he basically stopped throwing his changeup. Uh, I didn't throw a lot of changeups because I missed striking changeups. I said, I'm not going to do that today. I don't care. I'm going to throw three pitches. Uh, and then once my changeup won't start acting right and start striking a little more than it, than it had, hasn't been, then we'll be good. 
So the changeup took a break tonight, but it'll be back. Finally, I want to mention mechanics. This is definitely something that isn't my expertise, but I want to highlight a section of a video made by a channel called Pitcher List. For a pitcher to throw a strike, it's about getting their hand in the right spot at the right moment with all of their, their movement, their mechanics, generating power to then be released in that hand. And as we go through this, I want you to realize how late, look at this, the ball is still inside the glove as he's going forward. Blake Snell is relying so much on that arm speed at the very end to catch up. And what happens here is that his arm is too far, is too late. He's opening up, his, his hips are turning, and his arm is still back here. This is a very interesting observation by Nick. Comparing Snell in 2018 and 2021, if we look at when his right knee locks at the beginning of his delivery, the ball is out of Snell's glove. In 2021, the ball is basically still in the glove. This small difference could mean that Snell is relying too much on his arm speed. It's also interesting to point out his arm slot. For basically his entire career, Snell has had a high vertical release point, meaning he pitches with an over-the-top arm slot. However, since 2020, Snell's arm slot has slightly lowered. Look at the difference between 2018 and 2021. There's a slight change towards a more traditional three-quarters arm slot, but it's still a very minute difference. Seeing how Snell's curveball has become more erratic in recent years, could this be the reason why? And if he did intentionally change his arm slot, was it a reaction to his elbow injury in 2019? So let's recap the issues we found. We've seen command and location issues resulting in a lower swing and chase percentage. We've also seen a decrease in curveball spin rate, a production loss in the changeup, and a slightly different mechanics in the past two seasons. Is there a clear solution? Well, in terms of his mechanics, I don't know how much these slight differences are affecting his performances, so I can't speak on that. However, whatever happened to his curveball needs to be fixed. The arm slot effect is one thing, but when your spin rate significantly drops on a singular pitch, there's something that needs to be addressed. At the end of the day, Snell just needs to figure out when to throw certain pitches and locate them accurately. This should allow him to pitch deep into games. I mean, he's only pitched six plus innings in two games. These games were also his only 10 plus strikeout performances of the year. As a Padres fan, I will continue to root for Blake Snell, as I know he knows he's better than this. If he's able to figure it out, these numbers should look a lot different by season's end. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.